Hi there and welcome to another Bug Bites video. In this video we're going to modify the drop down that we built in a previous video to use Django's forms to dynamically load up the modules for a given course. And as well as the forms built into Django, we're going to make use of this library here. It's called Django Forms Dynamic and this is quite a new library that's quite well suited to working with HTMX, Unpoly and other frameworks like that. So we're going to see how to use this new library in this video and the code will be based off of previous videos so you can grab that code from GitHub. The commands to do that are linked in the blog post here along with other setup requirements here like installing the dependencies, migrating and then running the custom management script to load the courses and modules into the database. And once you've done those tasks you can start by installing the two extra libraries we're going to use in this video and those are Django Forms Dynamic as well as Django Widget Tweets. So I'm going to copy this command from the blog and we're going to paste it into VS Code. So in here pip install and that should install those two libraries into your environment. And once that's installed what we're going to do is create a new file here within our application. It's going to be called forms.py. Now this is convention in Django when you're building forms programmatically you create a file called forms.py and this is where we're going to create a university form that's going to represent this front end that we have here, this drop down and then the dependent drop down. These are going to be contained within the form we're about to build. And as well as doing that, because we've installed Django widget tweaks, we need to add that to our installed apps. So if you go to settings.py, down to installed apps, we can add Django widget tweaks with the widget tweaks app. That will add that to your application. And now we can use the widget tweaks um, tags within our templates. So now if we go back to forms.py, I'm going to do a few imports here. From Django, we're going to import forms. And from our models, we'll import the two models that we've defined, the course model and the module model. Now forms in Django are created with classes. So we're going to create a class called university form, which will inherit from the forms.form base class. And this is going to define two fields, one for our course and one for our modules. And of course the modules will depend on the course. But let's start with one simple field and it's going to be the course field, which of course is the parent field. And we're going to make this a model choice field, forms.model choice field. And the reason for using a model choice field is that we're providing a drop down that's a list of courses that are actually in our database. They're represented by models so we can use a model choice field for that and we can provide a query set to that and the query set is going to be course.objects.all simply all of the courses that we've got in the database and we'll also provide an initial argument to this which is basically when the drop down is loaded for the first time before any selection has been made by the user what do you want to show at that point and what we're going to show is the first record in the database so it's going to be course.objects.first which is another function on Django's uh, model default model manager. So now that we've got that, I'm going to go to models.py and I'm going to quickly add a dunder string method here. And it's going to simply return the name of the course. And the reason for that is that when we show the model choices, uh, we want to show the name of the course as the default string within the field. So now we have a form. How do we actually use this form? We're going to go to views.py. Now the template we're rendering here is going to be the same and we're going to pass a context to it but I'm going to change the code above that and what we're going to do is define a form and it's going to be equal to the university form and remember to import that. Um, so we simply instantiate that and it creates the form object for us and then once we've got the form object we add that to our context and it's going to be called form and we'll set that equal to the form instance that we've created. So now our university.html context will have access to this form so we need to change the template to actually render the field so now go to university.html and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use Django widget tweaks in this template so at the top you need to load the widget tweaks template tags and you can do that with this simple statement here now previously we manually created the HTML here this select element that represented our course in the drop down that you can see in the front end here now we're actually going to use the form instance that we have in our context to render the field. So we can actually delete all of this HTML and down here I'm going to render the form field. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say form.course that gives us access to the course attribute that we've got which is a field on our form. 
form.course and then we can use a, another attribute called label tag and this simply renders an HTML label for our form field and below that we're going to use the Django widget tweaks render field tag and the field that we're going to render is the form.course field and because we're using Django widget tweaks we can give any attributes we want to this HTML form element um, so we're going to give it a class of custom select this class is going to be from bootstrap and we'll also give it a bit of margin bottom as well and finally we'll give it an autocomplete equals off attribute as well so you can see that this has simplified our template code for rendering the HTML significantly and if we run the server now and go back to the front end and we refresh this page we now see we have a label showing up, which is course, and we still get our drop down with all of the different courses in our database. Now we're using a model choice field with all of the course objects in our database. And that's why on the front end, we see all of these. Now, one reason to use Django's forms like this is because of the simplification of the front end code to the HTML code. For larger forms, it's much more maintainable. You can build logic into these form classes, and we're gonna see some examples of this later on. Now, of course, our form only has the course field at the moment. We are now going to build uh, another field into this form, which is gonna be for the modules. At the moment, this doesn't work anymore. When you select mathematics, we don't have anything populated here because we've changed the setup. There are no HTMX attributes on uh, this template here. This render field needs HTMX attributes, which we're going to add later on. But for now, let's add the modules field to our form. Now we're going to make use of the Django forms dynamic package. There are a few things you need to know about this package. Basically it provides you a couple of constructs, a dynamic form mixin, which you can add to your form class. And it also provides a dynamic field. So when you have a field that depends on uh, another field, then you can wrap the, the field you'd normally use in a dynamic field. And that's done down here. You can see um, in this case a user field where it's set to a dynamic field the first argument it wraps is the normal Django form field in this case it's a model choice field and then you can provide additional keyword arguments to the dynamic field that are then passed to the underlying Django form field so in this case a query set will be passed to the model choice field and at the bottom of the documentation it has a section for HTMX as well as uh, for unpoly as well. And in the HTMX section, you can see that you have um, the choices being passed to a choice field and the dynamic field. And the important thing about this library is you can actually pass a function, a callable to uh, your different keyword arguments. And by doing that, you have access through a parameter to the instantiated form instance, which means you can access the values of other fields and you can then do selections based on those values. So we're going to see how to access the chosen course in our form and then use that to filter down the modules. So let's start by importing those two things from the Django forms dynamic package. From dynamic forms, import the dynamic field and the dynamic form mixin. Now the dynamic form mixin is added to this class here before forms.form, you can just paste that in and that adds the mix into the form. Now we're going to add a modules field to our form and this is going to be equal to a dynamic field and the first argument to the dynamic field is the the normal Django form field that we'd use and in this case it's a model choice field and to that we're going to pass the same arguments as above query set um, and initial and we're going to set these to functions that we're going to define in our class. The query set function is going to be called module choices and the initial function is going to be called initial module. So let's go ahead and create these two functions within our form class. So at the top, we'll create a function called module choices and the first parameter to that is the form instance itself. When this is called, we will have access to the form. We want to get the value of the course field. So to do that, we can set a variable here called course and it's gonna be form and you can use the dictionary syntax here to get a key called course, which will return this field here. And to get the value, we use the dot value function. And then once we have the course that we're interested in, we can then filter down the modules based on that course. So the module choices, this is defining, remember that the, the query set of modules, it's gonna be module.objects.filter. And we're gonna filter the course down to only the modules that belong to the chosen course. Remembering of course that the, the module model has a foreign key to the course so we can filter down the modules that we get in our query set here 
by only those that are associated with the course that has been chosen. And the initial function is going to be very similar to that. Let's paste this in here and we'll change the name of that to initial module. And again, we get the course out of the, the instantiated form. And then once we've filtered the modules down to only those associated with that course, we can then just chain a dot first call to that to get the initial module. So that's everything we need in our form class. We can now render this new field called modules within our template. If we go back to the template here, at the bottom we're including this partial. And within that partial, if we go to that file, you see we have a select element here. Now we're going to actually remove this include statement here. We're going to remove the partial. We're no longer going to use that. And instead of that, I'm going to copy the code I've got for the course field and we're going to paste that in here. Now in this case, it's not form.course, it's form.modules and we're going to render that field now. So if we save that and go back to the front end, uh, we see that we have the courses and we also have module objects. We can add a string method, a dunder string method to the model and it's just going to be the same as the course method. And that will now show us the actual name of the module. So we now get the actual names. So this is all being done now using Django forms rather than manually creating the HTML ourselves. So it saves us quite a lot of code in our templates here. We simply render the fields using Django widget tweaks and everything is done from this form class here. But at the moment, this is not going to work. We're going to have to make a few modifications. We're going to have to add HTMX attributes to this parent course drop down here. Now in the previous video, we had an endpoint here, a view and a URL for the modules. We're going to use that and we're going to change how this is done. So back to university.html here, we're going to add a get request, hx get, and this is going to go to the slash modules URL. And the target for the returned HTML, the hx target attribute, it's going to be the ID of modules. Now, if you look at here, the ID of modules, this is going to replace the inner HTML that we've got here with our new returned HTML from the back end. As a handy tip to make this a little bit more readable, uh, on VS Code, if you press F1 uh, and we change the language mode, you can actually select the Django template mode and we get a more readable version of this template. So just install the Django extension for Visual Studio Code if you want to use that. Now we have these two HTMX attributes on our parent course selection. So when we select a new course, it's going to trigger a get request to the slash modules URL and the returned HTML is swapped into our div ID of modules here. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this div with the ID of modules and we're just going to render the fields here. So remove the div and it's actually just this field here that I want to replace. So what I'm going to do in, on the front end, if we inspect the ID of this modules element, this comes from Django's forms automatically. You can override it, but it has an ID. If you, if you can see here, it's called ID underscore modules. So that's going to be our HX target. We want to replace this field. So we'll set the target to ID underscore modules, just like that. So when we get a response from the back end, it's going to be swapped into this field here. It's going to replace that here. And the final step in this video, if we go back to views.py, we're going to change the modules view here and we're going to use the form. So I'm going to copy this line here, form equals university form. And we're going to remove these two lines here. So we're making this view a bit simpler and we pass the parameters we get from the get request into the form. So now when HTMX makes a get request on the front end, just close the dev tools. When we select a new element here, it's going to send a course to the back end, as you can see here, course equals two. And what that's going to do when we pass the get parameters to our university form, is it's going to instantiate the course option with the value of two. So if we go back to our views.py file, instead of returning a template, we're just going to return an HTTP response. So I'm going to remove the context and we'll remove the render line here. And we're going to return an HTTP response, which comes from Django's HTTP package. So make sure that you import that at the top from django.http.response import http response and finally we can pass the form modules field now remember that the form has a field called modules and when we access it like this what it actually does is it, it gives us the html for that field so if i copy this and we print it to the terminal what this is going to do is when this view is called it's going to show us 
the HTML that is displayed for that field. So if I go back to the front end and we re refresh the page, when we select a new one, like mathematics, you can see that it has updated the options now. And if we go back to the back end, in our terminal here, we can see that it's printed out the select element with the options set to the mathematics modules. And if we go back to the front end and we select film studies, you now see that in the template we have the modules that are now associated with film studies. So this is all working now and we return that element as a string, that field within our form and if we go back to the template that is then swapped into this render field here and it replaces the modules with the new modules from the back end. So this is all working now and we've substantially reduced the code on our templates and we now have a form class where we can keep any logic related to the form and this gives us a more scalable way to build forms in Django and we're using this new library Django Forms Dynamic which gives us an easy way to define dynamic behaviour in our forms. So that's all for this video. I'm going to leave links to the libraries used and to the blog post in the description of this video. If you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.